Hi, fire catchers. I'm Andrea York with Catch the Fire Worship Flags, and this is another Fire Catchers chat. Today we are chatting with Susan Hancock. She comes from Florida, or she's living in Florida at the moment. We were just talking a little bit before we started recording, and she was telling me a, a little bit about where she's from, kind of a lot of different places in the United States, but I had communicated with her a few weeks ago, and I'm like, I think that the fire catchers need to hear her story. Uh, and so I want to welcome Susan. Thanks for joining me for fire catchers chat. Thank you for having me. I didn't ask you this before, but I wanted to ask because I wanted to get a fresh answer. So you've been in Florida now for the last 14 years, you said. Uh, what local cuisine that you love from Florida that other Floridians would know, but the rest of the United States or Canada, where I'm from, might not know? Either conch fritters or gator tail. Please explain what that is. Is that actually what it is? It's actually like fried alligator tail or gator tails. And then conch fritters is from the conch shell. And it's mainly a Key West, a Florida Keys delicacy. Wow. Okay. So would would our tail be very chewy? It has probably the same consistency as like a chicken nugget, okay. but a little bit different taste. Oh, that's interesting. So if you're watching this video and you are familiar with those things and you love them, just make a comment <laughs> uh, and let us know uh, what you love about them or if there's something else in Florida that you love to eat. So um, thanks for that. So our love we were connected because of our love of worship flags and you were sharing a story and that prompted me to like, I need to share that story. And you were so gracious to say in years past, you wouldn't have done that, but you've decided that you want to um, just have a little chat with me. Let's just start. How did you start using worship flags? Um, basically, after we moved to Florida, I really, really need something to do kind of to occupy my time outside of the store. And I took up ballroom dancing. I was in that about 12 years and got to a point where I really felt like the Lord finally said, I want you to stop taking lessons. And he said, I want you to learn to dance with me and not for me. So I stopped doing the lessons, but then there was like this big void. And I was in an online group and we had a little chat and I threw that on uh, the chat board one time about needing to find something as an outlet to be able to express what was in my heart. And somebody had suggested the worship flags. She said, that's what she does. And she sent me a couple of websites, including yours, and said, check this out. And I watched it. It was like, wow, that looks like something I really, really want to do. So I bought a set of flags and was trying to practice in the backyard with them when they came and found I was absolutely terrible and totally uncoordinated. And I just said, Lord, I must have made a big mistake because I just can't do this. And I gave the flags away. And about a week or so later, it was almost like I could hear the Lord saying, you know, you really need to buy another set of flags now because it's what I still want you to do. So <laughs> that's kind of how I got started in it. So, I mean, that's really an incredible story. So then you you purchased an, another set. And tell me then what was different when you picked them up again. And like I love, love about your story is that sometimes the thing that God calls us to is hard. And then we think, no, that can't be it. Right. It shouldn't and be this hard. And mm -hmm. yet the Lord is like, oops, well. Let's try again, my daughter, Susan, right? So, okay, so tell me about the second attempt. Okay. So basically, instead of buying a new set of flags, I decided that I was going to make a set, you know, and they were smaller than the regular ones so that I could use them a little bit easier where they weren't so big or cumbersome. So it was like, okay, I started doing that and practiced with them for a while, tried to learn new moves and found that with music, I could do fairly well with them. And I felt like the Lord was then saying, okay, we're going to take them to church. And I was like, but people are going to be watching me. And we have in our church, we have before service, it's kind of like a harp and bowl session where you have uh, the worship team and people pray before the service. So I went to that first and stayed in the back row. 
and basically flagged back there on and off. And it was like, okay. But I was, honestly, I was very self-conscious. I, I knew I didn't feel like I was very good. I felt like people were just kind of looking at me and it was like, okay, hey, th- I know this is what you want me to do. And so that I felt led to buy a new set of your flags, the, the larger, the larger size flags. Well, when I did that, I could no longer flag in the back row because the flags were bigger and I would hit the seats. People were walking by and it's like this. I said, Lord, this isn't going to work. And he said, well, it looks like you're going to have to move up front. So I moved up front, but made sure when I did it to start with that I only faced the front stage area. I didn't look who was behind me. And I just started worshiping and moving with the Lord and, and listening to the music and found that somewhere around the line, I went from just moving to the music to moving to what was in my heart. And at that point in time, I finally dawned on me that I didn't really care what anybody thought. It didn't matter if my flagging was perfect. It didn't matter what I was perceiving that people might be thinking. It just, it became about me and him. I love like, so that actually relate, I related to that story so much. It is quite common, I think, among flaggers that you put something in your hand that seriously shouts, look at me. It's a big piece of fabric. And so it's really hard to get outside of your head that all these people are looking at you. And then I love that the Lord brought you into this place of it is between you and me. It's almost like let others just who cares what they're doing? I'm really consumed with what you're doing. And it's what you're doing is beautiful to him. Right. And I love how in this quiet, you, you turned your face away from it so that you wouldn't be distracted, that you could fully enter. I find that if you so consumed with what people are thinking or watching, or you're watching them watching you, it's very distracting. And the the power of shifting atmospheres as a flagger is when you can fully engage in worship. If you're not engaged, then it's a very carnal activity, uh, wouldn't you say? Yes. And it started out that way for me as because I was more focused on trying to get the arm movements down and how to how I do this move and how do I do that move. But as it began to shift, I noticed that even probably about six or eight months after I started, before I went to church, I would be at home doing a few around the house type things. And I'd start talking to the Lord and I'd say, OK, Lord, what color flags do you want today? And he would give me a color. I was like, okay. And I'd be like, so what am I flagging for? And a verse would come to mind. A story would come to mind. Or it would be just, just come and love on me. Occasionally I'd hear, bring your, I have like an orange coppery color, which to me I use as they're my warfare flags. And I would hear the Lord say, bring the orange flags. And be like, okay, so what are we fighting for today? And he would give me a verse. He would give me, like I said, same thing, a story. We're fighting against this fear. We're fighting for love. We're fighting for my church. There was always something that came with it. So when I went to this prayer meeting, I would start flagging and I would start to pray the way that he had asked me to. This is what we're praying for. This is what I'm working towards. And one day I felt like he was saying that I'm not an island because I was doing this just on my own. And so I kind of got up the nerve one day and I went to the pastor who was just finished praying. And I I told him, I said, this is what happened this morning. This is what the Lord gave me. This is what I'm flagging for. And at first he kind of looked at me and he said, "Okay." And I went back to flagging and he went back to praying. But then I noticed right after that, he changed his prayer focus and he started praying for what I was flagging for. And then he asked the worship team to change their music a little bit to more of a a warfare type music. And that whole prayer focus changed. The whole atmosphere in the room changed. And I watched as we moved from that into service that the entire service changed. So it's been quite an adventure moving in, you know, moving what I call to worship, to warfare. You answered my question, uh, even as you were talking. So just even before you started 
let's back up the story just a little bit. You are in a church that allowed flags or how did that come? Were you the first one to bring flags into the church? They have a lady, she's like pastor of the dance ministry. And she had a flagging ministry there before COVID. And they kind of disbanded it and, but she would go up front and she would flag. So it would be just her. So it was a little bit easier for me because I knew that they were accepting of flags to be able to go up front and do that. You started worshiping with the flags at the prayer service, not in a Sunday service or public service. It was just those who are at the the pre-service prayer, the prayer service. Yes. I first started in the pre-service prayer but initially moved into the the worship service. Right. Um, And then did you ask for permission? I'm just, I'd like, because others people, other fire catchers are probably in the same boat. And, and this honor that we show are in worship flags. Some don't understand them at all. Some have no, you know, have no value for them. Uh, And so how did you negotiate that or navigate that? How did you were allowed? You knew that they were allowed, but did you ask for permission? I did. I asked if it would be, I actually went to the pastor that was doing the flagging and I went to her and I asked her if it would be okay if I just moved to the other side of the front and flagged there and and they were fine with it. The pastor was, was fine also with my going up and flagging. So, but I did ask. I and mean, that shows so much honor. I think that that is something that we need to do. When you got your worship flags, it wasn't even your necessarily in your tent to worship at the church. It was that you were just to do that. And that was part of your growing relationship with the Lord, even at home. And then he was asking you to bring them into the church. And then he made a space for you. Now that you've been worshiping, uh, I love that shift because that was the first time that you brought a word via flags to your pastor and he listened. Yes. And then is that something that they recognize you now as having to be able to perceive what Holy Spirit is doing? Yes. It's been sort of a progression because I know the first time that I went to him for it, I was praying like Moses on the mountain with the Lord. He said, show me your glory. And that's what my prayer focus was. And that's what I had gone to him and said, this is what I'm praying for. It's the first time I had done it. And he was like, okay. And then when church service started, one of the first songs from the worship team was show me your glory. And he was sitting in the front row. I was sitting in the back, but his head spun around so fast to look at me. And all I could do is smile and go like this because it was the Lord. But I think that little star helped him to realize that what I was hearing and what I was flagging for was something that the Lord was doing. You know, there's sometimes that it's really ramped up that things like the one I was telling you about uh, that changed the entire church service. I mean, he's much more open when I say, you know, this is what I really feel like the Lord is wanting me to flag. I think that that's, I mean, it's a really important statement to make in a lot of worshipers that will contact me and saying, I know that I'm called to, but, you know, they don't have the space and honoring progression that it took that you honored, you were faithful with what God asked you to do. And then he was faithful to make that space and it shifts atmospheres. Um, And so what has happened to you personally? in your relationship with the Lord. Now, I know we talked a little bit, like a lot has happened at that church where you have grown spiritually, not just through worship flags, but but element surely has has made a difference. Can you talk a, a little bit about how has it changed your relationship with Jesus? I think that it's really helped me to go deeper in worship with him. You know, in the past and in prayer, it's not that it wasn't good prayer, but it was more surface prayer. And with the flag, I'm not 100% sure I can explain it well, but it's like with the flags, there's something that connects with my heart through the flags in prayer to the Lord. And I don't know how it does it. I just know that it's changed dramatically. I know that my worship has gone to a whole new level. The whole communication with the Lord through the flags for between the warfare and and the worship, it's just gotten a lot deeper. 
And it's just changed the way that I think of it now. And it's, I think that I've become more bold because I've seen God work in my life through these flags. And I've become a little bit more bold on to be able to say, you know, this is what's going on. This is what I feel like the Lord's doing. Or I find it easier to talk to other people about flagging now. And it's changed and it's made it a lot deeper, I guess. That is beautiful to hear. I definitely feel that that sentiment, worshiping with flags specifically, my heart is, I, it's, it's inexpressible actually what the depth of which you feel something, but you know that it's, and if you like her, you know, like we're in the same, we're in the same community. It's very specific, I think, to worship flaggers. It's not even understand fully because it's the history of movement in color and powerful they are in terms of the entire worship service and how important it is for the assembly, whether they understand it or not. And you are so blessed to have a pastor and a dance pastor and a worship leader that responds and moves. Like you're very fortunate that you have a, a church that just willing to shift with the Holy Spirit. And so to those that would come against that in any way, I don't know if you've experienced that at your church, but what would you say to someone who says anybody who uses worship flags, that's just attention grabbing? I really think that it can be. I think that it's a condition of the heart though. You know, I think that for me, attention is probably the last thing I really want, you know, that I don't want to grab other people's attention away. I don't want people so much to look at me. I want to be able to worship in a way where other people, it does change the atmosphere to where other people can focus on the Lord. I don't personally care to do that. Yeah. I mean, it's probably why I started in the back of the church. It just it's something that I strive for, but I'm sure that it, it happens. I'm sure it, I'm sure that it does happen. And it is a condition. It's always about the heart. It's right. So those that are seeking performance, well, they might be attracted to the worship flags, but there's something a lot deeper. And, uh, and those that for like watching you as like a heart, like yours, it should Worship should beget worship. It adds to it. Um, and if you don't, un- but there are some that just don't understand it and then it becomes an offense. Uh, thankfully, you seem to have uh, leadership that supports what it is. If someone asks you to explain worship flags, how would you explain them? To me, I guess worship flags is a form of expression. For me, it's a way to connect with the Lord and in, in- a way that I never was able to in the past. I think that they could be used to lead a worship service. I think that, like I said, they're used for warfare. Absolutely. I started using worship flags a lot with with warfare. And then I remember saying to the Lord, I'm like, I'm I'm a little tired today. Can we just, can just you and me have this, uh, like a, a really lovely moment? And he's like, okay, like then then it wasn't that I, I was aware that the worship flags were doing something still, but there, it was just, I, I don't even care. Like, I'm just too tired to fight. I want to just be in your presence, Lord, and, and with you. And one of the things I also wanted to mention that you had said, even in, as you're learning, it can feel because we're unconscious. So then, oh, is my heart right? Is my heart right? It, it's in the process of getting right. But we do have, we do learn things like, Nobody comes into the kind of a skill as an expert, even with body movements. Now we, I mean, you may or may not be already comfortable in your own body. You were a ballroom dancer, so you probably had some grace. But then all of a sudden you add, you know, three feet in your each hand and try to move all of that around. And so how would you say to someone who's just starting in giving themselves grace for that process? What would you say to that? Actually, I would have said, give yourself some grace. I mean, it's not always easy, you know, but what I eventually found is I, when I started, I tried to watch the videos and I tried to, you know, move, okay, this hand goes this way and this goes this and this. And, and usually I ended up in a tangled mess. You know, you talk about doing the figure eights and that's where I started. And I found was when I stopped worrying about which hand was going where and which arm was going that direction. And I just started to move that it came so much easier. 
you know, you just have to, you have to give it some time. You know, just give it a little bit of time and keep practicing. Put on your favorite song. That always helps. That definitely helps. Yeah, I have actually just released um, today a one minute flagging movement tutorials. And so I have a few that are coming up with, with hopefully just breaking down uh, movements to start with. And again, the figure eight that everything else is built on it. It'll keep you from getting tangled up in the fabric. Yes. I think it's helpful to have a little bit of like, there is some technical training that's that's involved and that you can learn, but and listening to Holy Spirit and, and how we do that. We in the Pentecostal or the charismatic kind of stream, we all talk about, oh, just let Holy Spirit lead you. But how do we actually do that? And so it's it's a lot of relaxing and surrendering and really offering your bodies as a living sacrifice um, that he will move and he will teach you. Uh, one final question. Well, I get maybe not one kind of, but what is your favorite catch the fire worship flags and why? I have love is better than the the th- three layered flags. And I, I love them. I love the color. They're like a fuchsia something mix. <laughs> fuchsia and wine. Fuchsia and wine. And wine. That was it. Exactly. And that one I think is my favorite because I use it for times when I want to express that love that I have in my heart. And I don't know, I don't have any words for it. You know, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to express it any better. And I have a song a lot of times that I put on that expresses that love. And then I just flag to that. So I think it's probably one of my favorites. And what is your favorite song that you like to worship with it? It's um song by, uh, now that you asked me, I'll not remember it. It's City of David. It's a group. I think their album was Jerusalem, but it's, it talks about coming and dancing with him. Oh, it's wow. um, a song that's um, pulled from like the Song of Solomon you know, to come away with me and dance with me and dancer to kind of mesh that in with the flagging. I I just, it's one of my favorites. Oh, that's so beautiful. I want to say, Susan, thank you for sharing your, your story. Uh, I think that it's so relatable to so many people who are unsure and you, there's this confidence and poise that you I know you carry while you're dancing, but even in this confidence, I'm shocked that you you said, oh, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have wanted to do this, but there's such a beauty and a confidence that when you're talking about the love of your life, which is Jesus Christ uh, and how you dance with him, you light up. Is there any other thing, anything else that you'd like to share with the, leave with the fire catchers before I pray for you? Actually, the other thing I want to say is sometimes When you're flagging in a church, and I don't really pay much attention, but we have a great impact on a lot of people because I noticed that once I found that courage to go to the front and to worship during the worship services, several months later, I saw a young girl go to the other side of the sanctuary with a flag and start flagging. And then there was within probably six months to a year, there was like four or five people in the front of the church that were flagging, you know? So I think taking that step forward out of your comfort zone and being faithful to whatever the Lord's asking you to do has a huge impact on people that you may never even realize. That is beautifully spoken and very, very true. Um, Susan, let me just pray for you uh, as we close this up. Um, Father in heaven, I thank you for Susan, for her heart. It is just so pure and beautiful and how I just feel your delight in how she dances and how she ministers to your heart, but how you're using her to minister to the people that you have put her in a place of leadership um, and that she has risen to it, not as a place, uh, like as an office or as a position to take up and lord over people, but to lead and guide and and shift the atmosphere as she does in such a subtle and beautiful way. As she responds to you, as she responds to the Holy Spirit and his leading, and she shares and she releases it over the people 
uh, and leaves it even in in the hands of her leaders, of their pastor and the senior leaders, so that they can steward it, that she adds to it, that everybody has their part. I ask that you would continue to bless her, that you would give to her good health, that you would keep her body safe from injury that she would have a long life to in which to move and dance before you, that she would bring others into freedom in worship, that as to encourage them to go deeper into their own relationship, because it is all about you. As she, as she worships, you've called her to dance before the throne, just as the tabernacle of David, that, that her name, that she is named. I love that in that, in as David was setting up the temple, the ones that were named were the worshipers and that you have named Susan Hancock to minister to you and you call it beautiful, that it is a beautiful offering to you. Uh, I pray for the fire catchers who are watching that they would be blessed, that they would uh that something would ignite in them to rise up and step out in faith, step out out of their discomfort and do the thing that you've called them to do, that they would not be concerned with what man has thinks, that they would have no fear of man, but that they would have such an awe of God. That is the one thing that compels them beyond any discomfort and that you would raise them up, that you would teach them, that you would show them techniques, that they would even join part of a community that they are able to release this gift in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. If you have liked this Firecatchers chat and you have a testimony to share, I would love to hear your story. Please contact me at onfire at catchthefireworshipflags.com and we will see you on the next Firecatchers chat.